Okay, so amongst all this important stuff is this important stuff. Concept of a moment. Not the kind you might be having just now, not the kind that I have lots of times a day, but the physics kind, the mathematical kind. And don't worry about that word mathematical, it's not that hard. A moment can be represented in this way. It's a rotational force, or can be assumed to be a rotational force. A moment equals weight times distance. Now a weight will measure in tons, distance will measure in meters, so the unit of measurement for a moment is actual ton meters. And let me demonstrate it in this manner. I'll take my set of parallel rules here and I'll hold it with my hand. Now just imagine this is kind of weightless. Let's take that lever out of the equation. But let's put a weight on it and say this weight is one ton. The length of this lever is five meters. One ton, one meter away from the point of contact here. So one times one, one ton meter of moment. That is the, the force that I'm feeling on this hand. Two meters, two meters by one ton, two ton meters, three ton meters, etc. all the way out to the end until we get to five ton meters where I can feel that on my hand considerably, the force wanting to rotate it. Now, let's take this weight off and replace it at the end by an upward force, the force of buoyancy. And let's make the point of my hand represent the center of gravity. We need to indicate uh, a third dot, a third point on our transverse diagram now. And before we do that, let's just remind ourselves to make it a bit more visual that in fact gravity is acting directly downwards and as we can see the lines look a little bit different now because they're not in alignment the force of buoyancy is acting upwards and there is a point through which this this buoyant line of force crosses the vertical center line of the vessel and that point designed in again by the naval architect, it's not just some random thing, we're going to call M, and M stands for metacenter. Now the position of this metacenter can actually move, but under small angles of inclination or heel, the metacenter can be assumed to stay put, usually below about, let's just call it 8 degrees, small angles of heel, the metacenter stays constant greater angle of angles of heel than that, the metacenter tends to move a little bit and stability becomes a little bit more complex. But in your stability book, the naval architect has determined that if your ship has sufficient stability at small angles of heel, it's deemed to be safe at slightly larger angles as well. So, metacenter up here, also on the center line for these small angles of heel. Now, looking at the arrows, you can see that this vessel is now experiencing a rotational force. And if we draw an arrow over this side, just again to make that blatantly obvious, you can see that buoyancy is pushing up here, gravity is pushing down there, providing this rotational force. It's providing a moment, and we call that the writing moment. We can represent it, just like I did with the weight on the end of this ruler, by using a lever. Now in transverse stability, we refer to this as the GZ lever, and it's located here. Don't go lifting up the floorboards looking for it. You won't find it. Of course, this is conceptual only. There's G, and the point at which a horizontal line drawn from G, and I'll indicate that that is perpendicular to the buoyant line of force, G, Z. I once asked uh, my old stability teacher what Z actually stands for, and he went, don't know, it could have been X or Y if they just happened to call it Z. Okay, that was enough for me. So, G, Z. Its length multiplied by a particular force is going to provide us with that moment. And it, we can give it a numerical value if we knew what that force was. Can you figure out what it is? Think about Archimedes. Archimedes said that for a vessel to float, it must displace its own weight in water. So let's just imagine that we are dealing with a 20-ton vessel. How much is the force of buoyancy? 
it must be 20 tons. So as you can see, the GZ lever might be quite short. You might have thought, wow, to push a 20 ton vessel back upright, we're gonna to have to have a huge lever. But when you consider that the force pushing up on the end of that lever is 20 tons, this lever could be as short as uh, a meter or even less. G, Z. Let's raise G for whatever reason. Let's imagine G, uh, we've loaded our ship with more weight above the initial center of gravity. G will then be here and you can see what happens to GZ. Let's load it a bit more. GZ. Let's load it even more. GZ becomes smaller and smaller. What happens to the force? Nothing. Still pushing up with a force of 20 tons but the lever becomes smaller. The moment becomes reduced and the ability for the ship to return upright quickly is also greatly reduced. So here's a little, uh, a little card model I've just made to indicate, if you could see it, what it would actually look like when the ship's in actual dynamic motion is rolling from side to side. Because on the whiteboard, of course, we're just looking at instants in time. Now, just ignoring the fact that the meta center technically actually does move around a little bit we can see that the center of buoyancy is always located directly underneath it and it's describing a radius. This is called the metacentric radius or VM and it's measured in meters. Notice too that center of gravity because our ship is loaded properly is not moving but its force is always acting downwards. In your mind's eye can you just see GZ there? No GZ went upright as she rolls, just draw that horizontal line across to that uh, GM line and you can see that the opposing forces are creating a writing moment on this vessel until she goes back upright again.